Today I'm going to do something that I have never done before. G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck, my art channel where I share colour pencil drawings, tips and tricks. In today's video I'm working on this little drawing of a meerkat. The difference today being that I'm using Dermot drawing pencils, which I have used many times before, on Strathmore toned blue mixed media paper. So this is a pencil and surface combination that I've not tried before. So the result is going to be who knows what and we're just going to hope that I can make it work. So Derwent drawing pencils are an amazing pencil in my opinion, but they can they can be really challenging to use. So only time will tell how this is going to work out. But before we get into it, remember to hit that thumbs up button, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for a new video every single week. Now for this drawing, because I'm trying a new combination of pencil and surface, I thought I'd just jump right in at the deep end and attempt a background as well, because, you know, why not? Uh, so that will help me get a better feel for this combination of pencils and paper. And, you know, we'll just... I can allow me to work through the piece and see how it goes. So one benefit of using only my Derwent drawing pencils is that my colour selection is limited to 24, which makes the colour selection a whole lot easier and I don't have to fuss about with it too much. Now because I'm working on the background I've taped off the edges of the drawing and actually I'm using a new tape today for the first time too. So I don't use tape as much anymore since I switched to magnets on my glass top drawing table but it's especially useful for preserving edges like this where you want to draw all the way to the edge of the paper but I find drawing off the edge of the paper can be really a bit of a pain because the pencil catches on the edge whereas with taping off the edge it just works a bit nicer. So this tape is a scotch brand if you're interested. It's a painter's tape for delicate surfaces. It's actually called a painter's washi tape. So it's probably not acid free since it doesn't specify so keep that in mind if you try out this tape. It's probably going to potentially affect the colour of your paper if you leave it on too long or have some other effects potentially. So the way I'm going about this background at the moment is I've started in with some lighter layers with sharper points on my pencils and I'm slowly building up the strength in those layers, um, repeating the layering process over and over again. Now I found that I wasn't quite getting as, as smooth of an effect as I wanted so I decided to blend things out with my um, Derwent Drawing Warm Grey and I didn't really like that effect at all because obviously it muted the colours a lot and then not only that but I ended up with a lot of wax bloom and it just smeared things around uh, too much rather than blending them together and I think I simply just used too much pressure too early on but because I'd already started with that I felt like I had to continue like that so that's what you see me doing throughout this piece is layering up a bit with those colors and then blending out with that warm gray. Now I did come back to it I had a little bit of a break about this point in the background and then I came back to it I decided I would try to be a little bit um, focus a little bit more on my approach with the background and I went a bit went in a bit more easy with my colors a bit more gentle took a bit more time with it to get the color lay down that I wanted and to fill in those gaps and then I was able to use a gentler pressure with the mixed assorted colors to blend out and smooth out my layers a little bit more rather than having to resort to sort of burnishing with my warm grey because I didn't really want to do that, I didn't like the result and I thought I'd give this an attempt on the opposite side and see how it turned out before attempting to rectify the original side with the background. Now, as I said in the beginning, I don't normally do backgrounds. This is something that um, it's something that I'm not too fond of doing because I'm not very good at doing it because I don't practice enough so it's a bit of a catch-22 there where because I don't practice I'm not very good so I don't want to do them and so on and so forth but it is important to practice things even that you don't like drawing and the reasons I've done the background first are A because I know I won't enjoy it and I will spend more time on it if I do it first than if I do it second 
Now on the left hand side of the image, I, you'll see I actually use a bit of paper towel to wipe the surface of the colour pencil there. And that is not only removing some of that wax bloom that's built up to allow me to layer more, but it's removing a little bit of that, that pale grey tone that has come in with um, the wax bloom there and from the warm grey. I wanted to brighten these colours up. So I've just wiped the surface to remove some of that wax bloom so I can layer over the top gently again and just brighten this side up, rich and make the colors more rich and dark uh, to match the opposite side of the background there. And that came up pretty well. It was looking not like, it looked terribly awful. Like it didn't match at all with all that wax bloom before, but wiping it off and relayering it, it um, has come up quite nicely. Now on to the meerkat. Now another reason that I've done the background first before the meerkat is that with Derwent drawing pencils they are quite opaque so you can layer them um, light over dark. So with the background first I can add in some light hairs over the top of that background overlapping them which makes it easier to do rather than drawing in a background around some existing light hairs. So I'm going in pretty loose and pretty rough with this. I didn't want to spend um, days and days working on this. I wanted to see what was achievable on this paper, how the colour lay down worked, see if I could get um, a realistic but more painted look as opposed to a really refined look like you get with uh, other colour pencils. Like if you're using an oil based pencil like a Faber-Castell Polychromos which is quite hard, it's very hard to get this softer more painted look. And I really like that about the Derwent drawing pencils. I can do something that's a little bit more freeing, that's a bit more loose and relaxed, but I can still get a really nice result with it. It's still a realistic looking piece. It just has more texture. It has more um, loose artistic flair to it, I suppose. I feel like I can be a little bit more creative with it than if I'm using an oil-based pencil. So I'm going in with a lot of my, my lighter colors first. And so I'm doing a lot of white as a base fur layer and the, I think it's wheat and light sienna, adding in those base fur layers. And then I'm building up texture and depth with my darker colors over the top of that. So I can easily make the white darker, but it's harder to overlay the white over the top. Um, especially with, I've got to be cautious because this is a smoother paper I'm not sure exactly how much I can layer that light over the dark. So I've gone in quite strong with the whites and the lighter colors so that I can build up the darks over the top and then just add in white, a couple of white fur details rather than having to add in all of that light fur over the top of dark fur. So there's something to keep in mind when you're working on different surfaces. You're going to approach a textured surface quite differently to how you're going to approach a smooth surface. So moving into the shadowed area below the meerkat's chin and using that warm grey here again for blending like I did in the background but I'm using much lighter pressure. When I blended out the background um, I already had quite a lot of strong underlayers and I felt like I had to press really hard with the warm grey to blend that out. In these areas I'm able to just have a light application of that warm grey, work in small circles and get a nice blend on those colors there before adding in more detail and strength of color over the top. So I really enjoyed working on this piece and I think I spent as much time on the background as I did on the meerkat which is good because it means I even though the background is not my finest thing it's still I still spent a decent amount of time on it rather than rushing it after at the end of the piece. So working on the little face, once again, I can see I'm mapping in those bright areas first, using my brightest colors, putting all those in, working around them, and then adding in my darker areas and blending out and adding in fur texture over the top. And I found that worked really, really nicely on this paper. And although I'm not covering the entire grain of the paper, I feel with wildlife it doesn't matter as much because you're still getting their fur has texture and they have texture it doesn't need to be perfectly smooth so I don't mind too much about having some of that paper showing through I know that bothers 
some people to have the tooth of the paper showing but for me it just adds to the texture of the animal so I'm really focusing on getting my values right with how dark the area is around the eye and the eye itself and then the bright areas on the face to help not only define the shape but to help it look more realistic with the shadows and highlights so I did really enjoy doing this piece I really enjoy challenging myself and pushing myself to uh, not necessarily try new things because I have used this paper and these pencils plenty of times before just not together but trying new things together experimenting pushing my limits and just playing around with my pencils and I challenge you to do that as well and like I said in my previous video if you watched last week's about my tips for beginners don't be afraid to make mistakes I made plenty of mistakes in the background of this piece but I pushed through managed to correct them and I, in the end I loved how this turned out love the little meerkat's face with the fur texture there I think this piece turned out really really nicely so and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video this is the first time I have used this tape I only had problems with the first piece that I pulled off. It pulled off a tiny bit of the surface of the blue paper, but other than that, I didn't get any more paper pulling up and I did press this tape down quite firmly. It's always important to remember when you are removing tape from your piece to pull away from your image, not towards your image, so that if your paper does tear, you are not tearing off part of your drawing. But I do love seeing those crisp edges come up once the tape is pulled. So that's it from me for this video. Here you can see the beautiful finished piece of this little meerkat drawing. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Once again, please give the video a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you like this video. And I'll see you again next week for another one. Stay creative.